everyone. I'm Dr. Jerry Malhotra. Welcome to this really nice webinar which is in store for us, uh, courtesy Farmer. I'm very, very thankful to each and every one of you for this opportunity to introduce uh, somebody who is very close to my heart and my life. Um, I was just thinking that you know normally people will ask the wife to introduce the husband when they don't want somebody to speak too much. Uh, but here I am, and so I am privileged to uh, introduce our speaker for the day, uh, none other than Dr. Narin Malhotra. Uh, I'm sure all of you know him very well. I can keep on talking as much, but uh, just to cut it a little short, I would say. Uh, a few things which a lot of people don't know about. Well, everyone knows that he has been the past president of ESA, RISPA, COPSI, Indian Federation of Ultrasound in Medicine and Biology, and he also happens to be the vice president of the World Association of Perinatal Medicine, which is a huge organization, and it's the first time anybody has reached uh, that position in the World Association. Uh, apart from that, he's a very, very passionate obstetrician, which is one of the most important aspects and I feel is, is befitting for him to speak on this talk, uh, which is optimizing antenatal care in this COVID um, situation and the challenges. Um, when you're in the middle of everything, uh, you're a hospital owner, uh, you have, you know, almost 600 people working for you and you are in a hot spot, Agra is, the hottest area as far as uh, COVID-19 is concerned and then you are looking at strategies and you know making things happen in tier 2 cities, uh, facing all the challenges of not receiving CPs and so many things and then you are on the other hand um, making strategies and you are looking at the pyramid of care, nothing is happening like that. So there are lots and lots of changes which have happened in our lives today where we need to now look at antenatal care in a very different way. So I would really leave you here with uh, Dr. Narin Malhotra and let us see what he is going to now tell us about how can we optimize antenatal care in this lockdown period. So over to Dr. Narin Malhotra, thank you very much. Good evening, good evening. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry, for the kind words of introduction. Yes, I'm in the midst of uh, all the COVID. We are uh, delivering almost five, uh, six babies every day now with the load uh, on the bigger hospitals because the uh, smaller ones are not allowed to, be, uh, to work because of the staff running away and all the government uh, uh, guidelines which have come that you have got to have. So we talk all about that in the last few slides. Uh, so this uh, lecture is going to cover uh, the virus and its mode of transmission, the effect of SARS-CoV-2. Now, why we don't call it COVID-19 now? Because WHO in February, and we don't call it the Chinese virus, because WHO in February met in a high meeting and then cited on a terminology to be given to this disease. So they said no 19, so no year, that 19, no Chinese virus, no COVID, but it's coming from here. So it was co sars cov 2 So the disease name is sars cov 2 And we'll be mostly referring to it. Sometimes we, of course, in a hurry say for it COVID. So we are going to talk about what is its effect on the mother, what is the effect of SARS-CoV-2 infection on the fetus? What is the special antenatal care for non-SARS-CoV pregnant patients? So antenatal care for suspected or antenatal care for the confirmed ones. Now what is SARS-CoV-2 infection? Corona is a virus. Coronavirus has been known to us since a very, very long time. And if you read a lot of uh, drugs, even the bottle of Detol has it, this virus, this works against coronavirus. So it's, it's been with the human being for a very long time. It is basically a virus which causes common flu and goes away. And it has got various mutations. So this coronavirus 
was found in bats and purgle uh, animals. So probably eating a live raw animal converted it in a city called Wuhan in China. Uh, this virus jumped to the human being and it attacked the lungs. So that is it. So it emerged from an animal source and then it, very few viruses jumped from animals to humans. We had the H1N1, the bird flu, the swine flu, those have jumped and they have remained uh, as a human attacking virus now. So probably Corona will also live with us forever now. So it will be one of the diseases like HIV, Hepatitis and all that, H1N1, Corona will be, COVID-2 uh, COVID will be the next disease which will be in the infectious disease column. So it now spreads from person to person by coughing. By talking, when I'm talking and coughing, uh, the particles, millions of uh, droplet particles just go there and, and it is seen that when you cough or sneeze, they go to about one, one meter or maximum about six feet, two meters. So and then they fall on the laptop, on the table, on everything and then when someone touches it, it comes on their fingers and if you put the finger on the eyes or the nose or in your mouth, this virus goes into that person. So it transmits like that. The droplets remain in the air for a very few uh, hours, very few times. So it, it is not an inhalation infection. So it's by touch. So if you wear a mask, you will prevent the droplet going out. That would be the next uh, fashion statement. Every one of us will be, will be wearing a mask as soon as this lockdown. And there will be a fine for not wearing a mask. Then now, thank God, India will now have a huge fine on spitting on the roads and Pan Tamaku. Thank God, we needed that. But we did not need Corona to tell us that. Sneezing, then touching the mouth, nose, eyes before washing of the hands. And it is currently knows, uh, known that this virus does not cross the presidential barrier and does not spread through body fluid like uh, semen or with sexual intercourse. Impact of the SARS-CoV-2 infection on the mother. Now, mothers are, as it is, more prone to viral infections because of the physiological changes in pregnancy and because of the relative immunosuppressant uh, effect uh, the pregnancy has on them. So, because of both age, the physiological changes and the immunosuppressant, uh, some and some comorbidities which the mother might have, which we just tell you. Some pregnant women will be more susceptible to COVID, co coronavirus than the general population. Otherwise, they are, the, they are safe. So, maternal disease is not aggravated by pregnancy, the SARS-CoV-2, unless the mother has uh, comorbidities. How do we assess the comorbidities? We should be checking for hypertension, asthma, heart disease. Diabetes and HIV, these, these are the ones immunosuppressed uh, patients. And chronic renal disease, chronic liver disease, chronic lung disease, blood disorders and patients on immunosuppressive 3. These are the ones who will be more prone for SARS-CoV-2 infections. So these are the ones who, are, who have to be more protected. So let's see what uh, protection we can give them. It's important to take uh, precautions for these women and for all of us and for all pregnant women against the SARS-CoV-2 because uh, there is no, no vaccine, there is no drug, so pre precaution is the only way out. And um, if you get the mild symptoms or anything which uh, indicates uh, severe flu, report the symptoms straight away to the healthcare professional or the healthcare provider of your area at the earliest. Now let's see what uh, when you should be reporting. So the majority of the patients who get corona infection would just pass off like a mild cold, flu, a sore throat and a mild fever. A severe one will have breathlessness, acute respiratory illness, pneumonia and hypoxia. Very critically ill and will have very fast uh, respiratory rate, very severe hypoxia and uh, if a CT or an X-ray is done, 50% lung involvement. Those who are immunocompromised or elderly pregnant patients or women of high risk, they will um, 
Uh, also complain in the beginning of fatigue, malaise, body ache, nausea and diarrhea to start off uh, uh, of this disease, at the start of this disease. So does this disease affect the fetus? Well, as uh, of now, no. Good, good uh, response. So no increased rate of miscarriages, early abortions. Trichy, just yesterday a doctor tweeted from Trichy that we are noticing unexplained IODs in full-term pregnancy. So we need to uh, investigate that. We have, they have noticed in about 10 patients and we are now getting them tested for COVID. So we maybe, uh, you know, we will we'll come out with the results in a couple of days. Preterm births also some, some people have reported increase in number, but again, we are not very sure. It could be iatrogenic because of the drugs or it could be just spontaneous. There is no evidence of the virus, the virus crossing the placenta and causing intrauterine fetal infections or congenital malformation. Not yet. It's just a four month old virus. And there's no evidence of a vertical transmission or a transmission through genital fluids uh, at the time of delivery. So uh, index cesarean infection is COVID infection is not an indication of cesarean infection. Patient can have a normal delivery. You have to be prepared because high quality care before and after childbirth is required for COVID-2 infection. Antenatal care, intranatal care, postnatal care and uh, mental health care, which is very important. Now, because the consequence of infection to the mother, because the consequence of infection to the newborn, not to the fetus, after birth, and spread of the infection from the pregnant mother to another pregnant mother in the antenatal period, and spread of the infection from the pregnant mother to the healthcare professional or the healthcare provider, that's you and me. So we can get when we are caring uh, for pregnant women. So obstetric unit preparedness as advised by ICMR is needed. You have to have an appropriate isolation of the pregnant patients who are confirmed with COVID-2 or the persons who are under investigation. And we'll come to the trial soon. A basic refresher training for all the healthcare professionals. Now if, uh, the Manyata, uh, Foxy's Manyata program is giving training online on the ECO platform. So those who who you are a Manyata, Manyata is already there in UP, Jharkhand, uh, Bihar, Andhra Pradesh, in Karnataka. All other states will get Manyata, but see, uh, people have not registered. That is a, a tragedy. So if you register, we will train you on, online on the eco platform. Otherwise, you must have a training uh, uh, by the nodal COVID officer uh, in the district or in the CMO's office. They should come and train you for how to handle this. Special training is required, is required. You can't say, I'm an expert. So now this would be the training would involve correct adherence to the infection control practice protocol, the personal protective equipment, how to handle, which equipment to wear, which, and this training should be on video or live hearing or on a video platform or training on these platforms like this. A webinar on, on uh, training should also be there. Sufficient and upon adequate amount of PPP, PPE should be there in your hospital. Even if you have not got a COVID, we will now have to live with PPE for years, ladies and gentlemen. So the virus is not leaving us for at least two years till the vaccine becomes effective and every woman is vaccinated. Till then you will all have to wear masks, face gear and PPP to just see patients. That is the life which we are going to live. Uh, there will be no international travel and no travel by air. People will not go to the restaurants for at least a year. There will be no marriages, ceremonies. It, it's, it's a tragic world which you are looking ahead uh, of us and it's very scary. So sufficient PPE has to be. Of course, for people are going to design PPEs and design masks. As you saw, Sandulkar wearing a mask with 10. Today morning when you were saying mask wearing is going to be compulsory in India. And then we have to have a process where we can protect the newborns from uh, SARS-CoV-2 infection. So the mother doesn't uh, give it to them. So what do we do? We have an antenatal contact care for these women. So they have to come for antenatal or we'll tell you how. They have to take an adequate diet. There is no diet which will kill CoV-2, but uh, the adequate diet will boost your immunity. They have to do strict adherence to the infection uh, control and shielding and then we have quarantine and no travel allowed. This is a 
antenatal clinic. Now this is a Western antenatal clinic from Italy, which I just got a picture from my friend. And this is our own. We have to have social distancing. Every one of them is wearing a mask. As soon as they enter my gate, there are some temperature checks by this guy who is wearing a PPP, PPE and this guy is giving them sanitizing. So they are very far from the reception and the reception has yellow lines to stand for them and then they come into my room after all this. After. So that is how the antenatal practice is going to be in the future ladies and gentlemen. So now let us look one, two, three of the antenatal clinic for women with COVID times. So infected patient, no symptoms, will make full recovery. If mild symptoms may still make recovery, but they must be seen by a maternity care team immediately. If severe symptoms, then you have to reduce your visits and a whole multidisciplinary team is going to uh, see you. The antenatal pyramid is going to change. Where we had said that now women require 12 antenatal visits or at least 6 or minimum 4, now antenatal visits and routine screening will be reduced, postpone or increase the interval between the visits. The duration of the visit which we used to talk and talk and talk with the women or not talk is going to be shorter. Quickly, symptoms, quickly, examination and out. All the talking would be on videos now or, or in another compartment and they are transmitted to the, the clinician. Visitors absolutely zero, no visitors with the women, only one person allowed and that too is full protection. Iris cases will need more uh, antenatal surveillance and prenatal surveillance, yes, so we will have to devise a protocol for Iris and plan the visit, individualize uh, the frequent visit, less frequent routine clinic for non iris uh, but where surveillance is mandatory, they have to come. So the minimum requirement is four. One at 12 weeks, one at 20 weeks, one at 28 and one at 36 and the fifth is delivery time. So that is what the antenatal uh, uh, advice would be or the pyramid would be. Most of the antenatal visits will be now teleconferencing, video conferencing, either a replacement or an addition and uh, online communication with the provider, consultation of a maternal specialist, a fetal medicine specialist, a genetic counsellor, all that will be done on video and uh, home collection of samples for blood tests and all. Only they will have to come for the ultrasound when, when required. So wherever possible it is going to be home monitoring of weight, blood pressure and daily field movement count. Uh, uh, wherever possible. All cases, daily fetal movement count chart would be our most important flow of the fetal well being. So that you'll have to start teaching your patients and start learning yourself how to interpret the daily BFMC, how to test. There is no particular diet which uh, improves the immune system, but a high protein diet, vitamins and uh, minerals, vitamin C is very essential. Now, a lot of people have a question that non vegetarian non vegetarian would uh, spread the virus. No, cooked food does not spread the virus. Raw food, yes. So, meat, chicken, and eggs, but we would advise you to eat more greens with your eggs. Eggs and greens are very good, and, uh, and your adequate dose of vitamins and micronutrient supplements uh, should be taken by all. On hygiene, stay at home, social distance at home. Hand washing hygiene or sanitizing very frequently, 20 seconds, washing all in between, around, like a surgical scrub, all the loose and till here. Pop and sneeze on your elbow or on your armpit, depending if you are wearing half sleeves here. Pop in, so whole new popping and sneezing, wearing mask all the time, except for eating. Avoid touching your face, so once you are wearing the mask, you will not touch your face repeatedly. Desperately hygiene, as I told you, cough and all. And if you have fever and cough, immediately see the doctor uh, to know whether it's a normal viral or it is going towards COVID-2. Advice in travel, avoid all unnecessary overseas travel. As it is, there are no flights right now. When they start, still don't go for the next two years. Avoid uh, non-essential travel, local, Indian. And quarantine with some uh, for pregnant women in general population might have to quarantine them 
if they have traveled in areas uh, where there has been a lot of COVID infection. How do we shield? There are measures to protect clinically extremely vulnerable people. So we will protect the women, we will protect the children and we will protect the elderly in our house. And we need to protect women who have comorbidities and women who are immunocompromised much more. So proper uh, uh, protective movement. How do we shield them? Stay at home for at least 12 weeks. Within homes, minimize all non-essential contact with other home members also. Family members should remain at home and not bring infection from outside. And you should assess medical assistance remotely whenever possible. Stay medical. Antenatal advice to our pregnant women, healthcare workers who are uh, working, doctors, nurses, the others. Those who are allowed to work from home should be working from home. Like two of my doctors are working from home. So they are answering all the antenatal questions and queries on uh, the WhatsApp group which we have made for our pregnant women. Any gestation of uh, you, you must try avoiding. But if you are 28 weeks pregnant as a healthcare worker or working up to 28 weeks, you can go. But take proper precautions of, of social distancing and the other things. So, antenatal advice for pregnant healthcare workers the priority is 28 women weeks with underlying health condition is on red light. Avoid direct patient contact. Yes, you can go with it. And third, we recommend you to work from home. Those who can work from home, please work from home till the, the pandemic passes. The epidemic will still remain. The cluster will still remain for a very, very long time. So the antenatal care would be isolation at home, minimum antenatal contact and follow the antenatal algorithm which I show you uh, the pyramid. Now what happens to us when uh, suspected COVID-2 comes? Right now, each woman walking into our clinic should be treated as a suspected COVID-2. Any patient. So suspected COVID-2, you confirm with a COVID-2 test, which is now privately available. And a cheaper test is likely to be available by the end of this month. The cheaper uh, genetic test, the RNA, RNA test, which uh, we are very proud that the Indian IIT uh, has, has just Today only announced that they have made it, they are testing it and they found it 100%. The antibody test will be used for screening but later on. If they are asymptomatic then we divide them into asymptomatic or symptomatic. So they are screened in the isolation area and then in brought to the normal OPD. So regardless to care for maternal and neonatal and once you admit them then you admit them first in isolation. Get the test, then go ship them to the ward or the labor room. So, antenatal care for pregnant women with suspected or probable or confirmed CO2, uh, CO2 uh, COVID-2 infection, you need obstetric care and you need field medicine care. And you need psychological support, you need mental health care support and access to skill care. This COVID-2 must not land us up in uh, increased maternal mortality because we cannot give care. So women should, we have very great difficulty, you and me have controlled the maternal mortality uh, of India to 130, below 130. We don't want it going up, we don't want women dying of PPH, dying of uh, anemia or dying of lack of care where they could not get delivery, delivery in rickshaws, roadside, we just don't want that. No, please. So you have to be ready to give them care. So ready for care and then provide them with a good neonatal backup care and your pediatric uh, care should be equally good. So the algorithm, see this is how I am working these days. When I am doing ultrasound, I have the face shield, the N95 mask, so has my assistant and I, a normal. Now these PPE are various. In OPD you can use a 50-60 GSM. When you operate in 90 GSM, when you are actually handling COVID patient in the ICU, you have to wear have more than 110 GSM or 95 GSM. Where a uh, lining, so body fluids uh, don't go in. So suspected COVID patients, you have four steps: step one, two, three, four. Patient comes in, try it, screen them, uh, uh, think what is wrong with them, and select them as high risk or not. So where do should this woman go now? If she has a mild symptom, you have to make aware to all women on all your social platforms. And every time they come, there is no need to panic. You give them a number to contact the maternity team. 
if they have severe problems, they should go to a COVID hospital. Because all hospitals are not allowed to take COVID patients, so they should go to a designated COVID hospital immediately. Information should be passed, this information should be passed to all pregnant women and time to contact and information should be shared between the healthcare professionals. So all of us should share that information and report to the government, the local officer. Now pregnancy, who to con how to contact must not come, come to a routine clinic. They will go to a designated trial area, which I told you, where they will be tested if they are negative, then only they start coming to the routine clinic. And the key to visits minimum, the attendance minimum, they should come by private transport, not by ambulances. If they are coming by ambulances, that ambulances will have to be uh, fogged and quarantined for two days and deep mob and the driver which is bringing them. So that, that will also has to be kept in mind how these patients are transferred to us. The algorithm is that if this patient may have on one side fever or may have a first time contact as here. So if they have fever, then the history of travel to be taken, cough and difficulty and gastrointestinal symptoms and then they go to a area where you or they have been living together uh, in an area. So they go to the third level. So level 1K, 2K and 3K depending on how and where they are coming from. Similarly, first point contact, initial assessment area and a triage screening then maintain one meter distance from the patient and give the woman a surgical mask. That is very important. So how do we assess the suspected case? Well, we have to assess them for uh, obstetrics and for infectious disease and the obstetrician assessment. So you need to assess them for the disease by an infection case specialist. So they come here infectious disease specialist and an obstetrician. Whether they are in elevated risk or moderate risk or whether they are impending delivery. If they are yes to any or both, then we you admit and manage as per guidelines. And if they are no, then you just let them go home, isolate them, self-monitoring. If the systems persist, then they go again into the COVID-2 guideline uh, management uh, protocol. Suspected case not in labor, institute infection control measures straight away. Multidisciplinary efforts, consult your infectious disease specialist. Healthcare professionals must wear PPE for the next one full year. I am stressing this repeatedly because you have to protect yourself. You are the one who is who's caring for these women and you are the one on high, highest risk. I am the one on the highest risk. Then transfer immediately to an isolation room test and depending on what the test comes, you follow the next trial. So send the sample from the nasopharynx, do not delay the obstetric care till the test report comes, treat them as COVID and take all precautions, deliver them to a cesarean. See if you take precautions, no problem. If you don't take precautions, major problem. And then uh, they should be shifted to a um, COVID-2 hospital where, where the treatment should be. Now if you have confirmed cases which are asymptomatic, home isolation, now it is being allowed and there are new guidelines for home isolation which I can send my WhatsApp to all of you or to Parmet and they can circulate. I will also circulate the PDF of this uh, presentation to all of you so you can just go, go at your leisure what you have missed in the uh, talking and what. So asymptomatic, no power comorbidity, no obstetric emergency, give them an umbrella of care in home or in the isolation quarantine area with adequate, uh, please adequate medical supplies. Not the quarantine which we are seeing these days in tier 2 cities. Very, very pathetic. They are putting them in schools and not giving them any care. Which we are strictly, very seriously putting it forward to our Honorable Prime Minister. So antenatal contact, asymptomatic, SARS-CoV patients, pregnant patients. You delay the antenatal contract uh, for 14 days till the incubation period is gone. No additional test. Please don't advise them any additional hemoglobin TSH others. And once they are passed, if they are in the green zone, you do a growth scan or OGT, all your regular uh, appointments and they can come for that. So red, blue and green, antenatal contact will be as according to their symptoms. Now this patient is very, very concerned about the well-being of herself and her fetus. And if you see in our IMUMS app, the Adbus Matsuta app, every evening 6 to 7, we are talking, taking 
questions from these women and trying to answer or allaying their fears. Hundreds of questions come in one, uh, one hour on what, uh, what to do, I'm scared, I'm just saying maybe we'll get infected. So additional care and implication, they don't need it. Ensure she gets necessary counseling, even by TV, video conferencing. Provide information on the risk or adverse or effect of the pregnancy. Reassure them. Ensure she gets necessary number and she knows how to get it. Get there, the contact numbers and advise the contact maternity team on how to go about it. So one to five on women self who are self-isolated, how to handle their uh, problems. Now, if there are patients are symptomatic, cough, fever, with SARS-CoV-2, they go to a COVID hospital. Small nursing homes and all, please do not admit them because you are not authorized to treat COVID. Even if you are an expert, you get your hospital done COVID and then you will not be dealing with a normal patient. So hospitalize these women depending on their severity of symptoms, the obstetric emergency and labor and place of uh, admission may be either the ward or the isolation room or even the ICU depending on their condition. Then here the severity of the symptoms is assessed. It's only mild of uh, which is in majority 80% of them luckily and some of them will have basic pneumonia, treat that and immunocompromised and severe critically ill go straight away in ICU on ventilation on repairing, on uh, the complete COVID treatment protocol, uh, FCQ, azithromycin, antiretroviral, supportive treatment, all that, which uh, the other team will look at. Now, when you have confirmed cases, symptomatic, and you have to, which we delivered a few days back, and see everyone is masked, and when I'm holding the baby, even I'm looking at the baby, I'm handing over to the pediatrician, complete PPE. I am sure these baby babies are saying, where have we come? Earth me aise log ho gai? Yes, ab aise log ho milenge for the next one year. I'm stretching every time one year, please be careful. Early maternal signs are BP falling, diastolic, heart rate slowing, respiratory rate uh, very slow or increasing, oxygen saturation falling, Urine output falling, multi organ failure, all the signs, maternal confusion, uh, agitation, non responsive, preeclampsia, severe headache. These are all the early signs. If she's having these, go straight to a COVID multidisciplinary hospital. Don't try to treat her. The quick uh, sequential organ failure assessment tool, which is known as SOFA, the BP, respiratory rate, and alerted consequence. One, two, three, A, B, C, and two of the three, she's six, six very serious ill. Send us straight away. If the case is confirmed and you are a COVID doctor, you consider emergency delivery immediately, cesarean. Because otherwise acute renal failure will occur. And if acute renal failure or uh, organ failure has already occurred, septic shock or severe failure, she goes into ICU. She has sofa or she has an early maternal sign, you continue monitoring in a HDU or high dependency or an obstetric ICU and if, if it converts into severe, straight away into a critical care ICU. That is if you are handling COVID patients. And then you monitor all of the, all their parameters, everything. And if you need to do X-ray only when indicated with abdominal shield and informed consent. And consider therapy so that the oxygen saturation remains over 95. We want it over 95. The drugs which are used, as I told you, thrombophylaxis is most important. Even for uh, patients who are at home, start heparin and start uh, aspirin because it is seen on the autopsy I was just reading today that China did not do autopsies. Had they done autopsies, we would have known that how it kills. It does not kill by consolidation of lungs. It kills by thrombosis in the coronary artery and the brain artery. So actually the people are dying of heart attacks and brain attacks and of course uh, thrombosis in the lung artery. And of course and it's just because of that cytokine strong. Massive inflammation, the body responds to the inflammation by a cytokine strong and to prevent infection our body thrombosis produces thrombosis in all the small vessels and that's how we die. So antipyretics, antibiotics, secondary antiretrovirals, 
SCQ, vitamin C, supportive treatment, all that has been tried. I'm not an expert on COVID-2 uh, virus infection uh, treatment. The COVID-2 hospitals would be better, but these, this is what I know. How do we do the fetal, fetal heart rate? Of course, you can put in uh, cordless monitor and monitor it outside wireless. Uh, daily PT count at home, antenatal corticosteroids if the symptoms are coming at 32 weeks because you might have to deliver this woman at 32 weeks. Women are delivering a little earlier, so, and uh, obiscovy infections are by 34, so antenatal corticosteroid pro prophylaxis after 24 weeks, if a suspected COVID-2 comes, is a must. And if it is mild, you just let it go till term and monitor uh, the labor care. If it's severe, then of course we have to deliver as I told you. Now post recovery antiretic care for the uh, pregnant woman, she, is, she got COVID, she is out of it, 14 days her test is now come negative. Once her test comes negative, she is not going to spread infections, so she is not infectious. So don't be scared now. She's only going to spread the virus comes out in the feces for 21 days or 28 I think. So another five days you can get test done again and this time you can get her, probably get an antibody test done also. The cheaper one. So she recovered, then she's treated as normal antiretal patients, but again, these days it's going to be universal precaution for all antiretal patients. So your PPE, you have to be dressed in your PPE in your antenatal brain. And then you, you follow up the antenatal protocol which you follow with all, all, all your women. The latest ICMR guidelines, which can be downloaded just some five days or four days before. Management chart, the flow chart of management, pregnant women with exposure, uh, uh, the RT test, negative yeah, or not, asymptomatic, I, I, no isolation room, they can go home. Symptomatic, they go into isolation room, critically ill, they go into the ICU. And these guidelines are very, very good. These are the latest, the four days, where you have to stop monitoring, where, where the test is negative, no extra care required, where it's mildly positive, patients are going to recover 82%, where it is negative, I home isolate and they have been touched, and where it is hospital, tertiary center, uh, and you have to admit them, critical care, maternal and fetal monitoring by a COVID-2. COVID expert team, not you. They are your own patients. With severe criteria failure, then deliver the baby immediately and hand it over to the, the patient that goes into the ICU, the COVID-2 ICU, or COVID ICU as we call them. Now here is our own personal guidelines. For me, SARS-CoV-2 test protocol in pregnancy, this is I made this, and who to test? We are now testing all pregnant women one week before their delivery time, or at least five days. We are all, I mean, that's for our registered patients. We are after taking a clean history, and those who have no exposure or no history of exposure, no uh, the temperature uh, screening and the history screening occurs for everyone. All unregistered patients which are coming to us, especially from hotspot areas, or from hospitals which have closed down because of COVID infection, Immediately are put into an isolation room and the COVID test is ordered. For ordering the COVID test, you have to have an Aadhaar card, you have to have a prescription, you have to write a prescription on your pad which has your MCI number. Two labs in uh, our, our city are doing it, the Lal lab and Pat Crime, and we call that person and they collect it after paying about 4500, which is a charge. And these women remain, if they are admitted, remain in that isolation trial area or the green area till the report comes. If they are negative, then they shift, they can take a single room or whatever. But they get good care there. If they are positive, they are immediately transferred out of the hospital to a COVID hospital, not to us. We are not handling COVID patients. Now these are the precautions which you have to do. That's my anti training. Clinic, the white uh, PPE which I am wearing is a lighter one, 50 to 60 GSM fully covered with a N95 mask, gloves or not gloves it doesn't matter because even with gloves you have to clean your or wash your gloved hands or sanitize your gloved hands. So gloves or if you wear anti-rate care can be done and just sanitize. When the patient goes out, the attendant comes in and sprays hypochlorite on my consultation table even if the patient is not touched it. 
But if patient is talking to me, some droplets might have come on my table. All patients, no patients can walk in without a mask. Absolutely no. If they have not brought a mask, they come with a hanky, they jolly well buy a 20 rupee uh, cotton uh, mask or a cloth mask, the green color, right from sterilized, we give them sterilized, 10, 15 rupees or so. So, and then when I'm in the operation theater, I of course have to wear the full PPE to operate. And uh, how can we reduce the shoes, the chappals, the gloves, the dresses, the mask, hand washing, sanitizing, all those precautions have to be taken care of. So these uh, infographics, that's just after delivery, that's how I look uh, and that's how I look in the future for at least one year delivering any patient and that's how my pediatrician looks when, he, when I gave the baby to him. This baby was a little premature, so the baby and he is also in the full CPE. Uh, of about 70 uh, GSM, 60 to 70 GSM. We all got color coded for all, for all of us. So this is very important and these charts are all available. I can give it to them. Special respiratory precautions which you have to take and how to dispose, tie your mask, how to dispose your mask, how to wear the PPE, how to wear the hood, how to scrub and all that is required. There are videos available on the government website on YouTube. You can go there or uh, you can ask someone to take a training class for you for that. The precautions, we have uh, iMums app, iMums, just search for it on your app, on the Apple store or on the, and this app takes care of a lot of advice to pregnant women. And of course, this is a twins which I delivered just today, today morning, uh, pre premature twins unregistered, we are still awaiting the COVID uh, two test. She is still in the isolation green trial area, and the babies are also in the isolation and ICU because they have come premature. So I'm scared if the uh, COVID test if it comes positive, then the patient shifts out and the baby shifts out. Otherwise, we're going to keep looking at her. And I, I, I can tell it, tell you tomorrow those those who want to know what what happened to them. Please download the iMums app. So you have the doctor's portal on it and you have the patients. And tell the patients all to refer to the iMums app. Huge amount of information we put there, not only for COVID, for complete pregnancy care, gut sanskar, adbus markasa, and bringing out the uh, a child, a healthy, healthy child. So it's got songs, it's got music, it's got exercise, it's got everything. So the take home points, the traffic light is pregnant women follow the same recommendation as non-pregnant women, anti dating care with teleconferencing and video conferencing is better and if with all patients you follow the trials. Following the trials is very very important for yourself and for. I have referred to a lot of uh, references. The best reference we have for COVID is our own POPSI's Good Clinical Practice Guidelines, GCPR. The third edition has come within three months. We are the first organization who came out with a guideline and which we revised in one month and we have revised it yesterday again. And if you don't have it, just WhatsApp to your to the proxy office and they'll send it to you on WhatsApp. It's on the proxy website and the, it's it's come to all the members who are registered with proxy on their email or on their uh, the link has come on their SMS or the link has come there. That's the best. Otherwise, ICMR guidelines are there, the Government of India guidelines are there. Huge amount of information, everything is there uh, for you to read uh, read there. Now this is uh, what we took today. Outside the OT, when my OT people said, Sir, ye isse chutkara milega ke nahi milega? So I said, ye boxing match hai. Sometimes we will lose and you will all hold your heads like this. Sometimes you will win and you will cheer me with this. So this is, you have to allay the fears of your colleagues, of your OT people. They are so scared, they are so scared, all your staff working that sometimes we got a video of this also which I put on my Facebook. You can go to my Facebook and look at all these lovely pictures, look at all the information which we have. Thank you ladies and gentlemen for attending this. Thank you Parmed. I think a few slides of Parmed on their products which are there and we are going to go through that. These are uh, what they have. They, they are an excellent company which has come forward on educational platform, on helping doctors platform and they have got a huge range of of so many, so many things. 
especially i was very 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 impressed with their product called pro life uh, which is which actually stimulates the progesterone in the body so you don't have to supplement progesterone in the early pregnancy you can do give their pro life even if your the patients on progesterone we had and i did a uh, i did a seminar and a talk on pro life and it's how it is used so thank you ladies and gentlemen i am open to all questions i can see about 23 questions already there and we'll try to take each one of them so here they are coming on email so i don't know the names uh, but kdpmc is it necessary to cut short the second stage of labor during vaginal delivery well uh, follow the your own vaginal delivery protocol if you are cutting short by ventus please do it it doesn't uh, it will it will help uh, tire the patient if she is a covid patient infected patient then and symptomatic patient she needs a cesarean section please don't give symptomatic uh, patients a try dr rupa rupa k uh, kuchana app name on the iphone sir i mums i small m u m z i mums you search in the play store or app store and you will find it or on facebook we are also or on youtube all our old videos which we have done in the last lockdown every day we have done a video for patients all are there on youtube you search youtube i mums and there you are is it uh, if it comes to emergency then isolate till the report comes i told you yes you have to have build up an isolation room in your uh, hospital uh, for that so smaller nursing homes are having difficulty because of the space constraint can we use telemedicine i told you yes the telemedicine law has been changed it is no longer illegal uh, to prescribe on telemedicine so you can do telemedicine you can make your own hospital app you can approach the uh, uh, library practo things like that or you can design your own app or do it on facebook or do it on your patient private uh, respect contact do all patients they respect of uh, symptoms need a covid test unregistered patients yes during ultrasound tvs what precaution ultrasound probe has to be clean otherwise you are in a ppe the probe after the patient goes remove the uh, condom or what you using and dip it inside it till half an hour till the next patient comes in so you will clean uh, the copy manjushri the copy of this webinar yes the i will uh, send the pdf it is ready as soon as uh, tonight only i will put it on all the groups if you are a part of the group you will get it there or i'll give it to the public people and they can circulate to you they can circulate the video also once again uh is the patient comes in an emergency isolate and then yes how much time it takes for the report 24 hours uh, in 12 hours you can get the report whether it's positive or negative on whatsapp but the printed report will come to you in 24 hours and as soon as the icmr approves the antibody test the report will come in 3 hours and the new indian test which is the iit is testing from today they have already run the first test the next whole week is testing on patients and if it comes by may end the report will be much faster and much cheaper 700 bucks only uh if to be uh, app name i told you ppe is personal protective equipment there are many of them again you can see my site on what are they and if you text me my number is 98370 9837033335 you give me a whatsapp i'll send you all the type of ppe available how much they cost who to where to buy from why thermo prophylaxis is needed because covid 2 causes a cytokine storm and this cytokine storm causes wide thrombosis in all the minor vessels in the heart in the brain in the lungs in the kidneys and that is how your organs fail so that is working very very good on uh, in treatment of it prenatal screening protocol uh, can we highlight most frequent question asked by me to me from in all the webinars see a prenatal screening protocol was 13 weeks ntnv and a 13 weeks penta marker penta marker is three blood markers which is the papi and pigf and uh, blood pressure on both the arms and ntnv 
and the risk calculation. So we were doing it at 13 weeks and making them to high and low risk. Low risk, no more testing, high risk was for amniocentesis at 17 weeks or a CVS at 13. Now if the patient is unable to come to you at this time and not come, shift your screening to 18 to 20 weeks. 18 to 20 weeks do the quadruple marker as an anomaly scan. If still she is not able to come, then pray to God she does not have any genetic anomaly. After 20 weeks, no genetic screening is allowed in India because no abortion is allowed. The new law which uh, will allow abortion is 24, so maybe till 22, 23 weeks, we will be able to do genetic screening as soon as the law comes. Okay, now the patient has come in emergency, COVID test sent, you deliver, wait for the report, keep in isolation, if ne uh, negative, in, in your hospital if positive goes to COVID patient. You cannot keep COVID positive patients at all, unless your hospital is authorized. Uh, Thrombophile prophylaxis by low molecular weight heparin is much better. Unfractionated heparin, ICU patients are given VD unfractionated heparin. Most patients hide their history, yes. So how do you protect yourself? You wear a personal protective equipment completely. Any patient who walks in, consider the patient as a asymptomatic carrier. So wear a face cover, wear a PPE, and have a maintain a distance, let the patient sit, and make the patient wear a mask before talking to you. If the patient has a travel history of 14 days from a COVID infected country or an area or a heart span, 14 days, then uh, an asymptomatic. That if within 14 days you treat them as potentially COVID asymptomatic, after 14 days then they can uh, uh, be treated as normal. But still everyone can get infected. You and me can get infected any day. We might not even know. We might not even get uh, cured without having any symptoms. So take care. Take care, take care, take care, protect yourself, learn respiratory manners, wear a mask compulsory, wear a face cover while working, wear a personal protective equipment. All of us will have to wear it, not for these two, three months, for a year at least, maybe two, till we have a very effective vaccine which will uh, be given to us and which will work. Then also this virus might mutate and every year you might need a new vaccine. Like H1N1, influenza vaccine, let you upload. Have you taken? If not, take it tomorrow. H1N1 season is coming. And every year H1N1 vaccine should be taken. And it's just 6-700 rupees. And it saves you from swine flu. And hepatitis vaccine. Please take, please take, must take that. Thank you for all of you who are praising uh, the talk and the uh, clarity. I thank you very much. Uh, I acknowledge all of you for attending this and I appreciate your questions. I think I have been given the signal to call it off. Is the in OPD what is the minimum protection to be worn? I told you uh, personal protective equipment head to toe of 50 to 60 GSM with a N95 mask and preferably with a face shield also. That's how we would live practice medicine law. So thank you very much ladies and gentlemen for attending this. Thank you Parmed for giving me this opportunity uh, for talking here. Thank you. Signing off now, Dr. Narayan Malhotra from Agra. You can contact me as I told you on my email or on my mobile. Please WhatsApp because I get too many calls. 9837033335. You can WhatsApp your questions. You can WhatsApp whatever you want. I will send it to you. SCQ profile access, yes, someone, I must answer this. Uh, if you are a healthcare professional and worker, SCQ profile access should be taken. Though it is very debatable that it is going to help or not. Uh, in severity, some people say it's, um, it does not, and if you get the disease, it does not help in mortality rates and all. Some people say so various studies, but 400 milligram SCQ, we've been taking it since childhood for malaria once a week for seven weeks for healthcare professionals, for non-healthcare professionals, family members, three weeks. Not to be given to children, not to be given to cardiac patients. 
those who are on cardiac uh, beta blockers will not be given to them very strict watch read the secure instruction and then give thank you